The year 2021 is nearly at a close. I've been seeing a lot of people doing recaps of what they did or what happened to them or other similar things for 2021. And I thought about that and I said, well, I'll do a, a video about that. And I'm not going to talk about what's coming up in 2022. I'll probably do a separate video about that. I just thought it'd be kind of an interesting idea to look back over the year. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about as I went through and saw the various things that I've done or that I've been involved in over the last year. And some of them might be things that you could be interested in and haven't learned about because I'm kind of spread out in a lot of different places. So if that's the case, you can click uh, the show more or video description below and there'll be links to all these different things. But I'll just lead you through it right now, uh, running through things in, you could say, no particular order, although I do have them written down for myself as notes. So the first thing I thought I would start with is I've been now married for 10 years to Andy Shaka, my, my wife, <clears throat> and we had our 10 year wedding anniversary back in November. You might've seen that in social media. And just a few days ago, we had a different kind of anniversary. So Andy and I have known each other since 1985 when she was a freshman and I was a sophomore uh, in high school at Catholic Memorial back in, you know, a long time ago. And we, you know, we, we knew each other back then. We crossed paths again in the 90s. Then we sort of, you know, as everybody does, lost track of each other. And we reconnected through Facebook in... Um, well, 12 years ago. So, you know, in, in the very end of uh, 2009, uh, I'd been getting Facebook suggestions. You know, you should send a friend request to this person for a couple of months, actually longer than that. And I remembered the name and I remembered her as being somebody pretty cool. And so finally I sent out a friend request and she answered and that's how we actually reconnected through Facebook. We started writing each other back and forth, found we had all these common interests, eventually fell in love. And then after that, after actually deciding that we were going to get together and get married, we began talking on the phone at a distance. So there's a whole story to be told there, but you know, suffice it to say we've been together for, you know, a long time. And we've also been back here in the city of Milwaukee, which is not actually where both of us grew up. We both grew up west of here. Andy a little bit west, me a little bit further west out in the sticks, which is now pretty developed. Um, but we've been here in the downtown of Milwaukee uh, six years. We came here with two dogs and, and a cat. We still uh, have, you know, the one cat left, Sassy, who is 19 years old. And, you know, she's also doing pretty good. Uh, this last year has been a lot of time spending time with the Sassy cat. She now sleeps uh, most of the day downstairs in the kid's bunk bed. Um, but, you know, she's pretty old, so she's doing pretty good. You may have seen pictures of me taking her outside on the deck or other places. And that's that's us, the little household now, me and Andy and Sassy. Um, I've also gotten to see my oldest daughter who lives up here uh, part of the time in Milwaukee, going to University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Um, and, you know, so that that's been nice as well. Another cool thing about this year is I've been getting in quite a bit of regular exercise and I have gone from about 300 pounds down to 270 pounds, which is good, you know, for the circulatory system and my knees and everything else. And that has been through adding a good bit of muscle and getting rid of a lot of fat because I've been doing the weight circuit and taking long walks. Those are the majority of the exercise. I did go to a few aqua zumba classes with Andy, but that wasn't really my sort of thing. So it's, it's all mostly just the weight circuit and, and these nice long walks that you may have seen pictures from. And what else? Um, you know, I, I did academic teaching this year. 
Um, I actually taught, I think, 10 or 11 classes. Um, I'll start with MATC because that is, in some respects, you know, I, I'm changing things up with that. So MATC is Milwaukee Area Technical College, which the main campus is, is about five blocks walk from here. And I finished up teaching for them. I, in the, um, in the uh, spring, I was teaching two classes for them, Intro to Philosophy online, and I was teaching in the Second Chance Pell program, which is for uh, prisoners here in Wisconsin. I was teaching ethics for that. And then I also taught an ethics class in the summer. And then I decided I, I don't really want to teach for MATC anymore, in part because, you know, they they don't pay very well and they're kind of dysfunctional. I, that's that's a subject for a whole other conversation. So I just tapered off teaching for them. I am still teaching for Carthage College, which is down in Kenosha, but I teach only online for them as well. I, I'm not driving down to Carthage and I'm not... Um, you know, spending time on, on campus. But, um, you know, I, I did teach two classes for them, uh, an intro to philosophy class and then a business ethics, a class that I've been teaching for them quite a bit. And I think that's probably the last business ethics class I'm going to teach because things have been moving around in, in the curriculum. Um, and so now the business ethics class, I'm sort of like having to answer to two different masters and I've decided I'm not going to do that one anymore. Instead, I've been focusing a lot more on Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, which is the main place that I teach. Every semester, I teach two classes there, and then I teach a summer class. So I'm, I'm not full-time, but I'm, you know, teaching a pretty significant load there. And that's the cool place to teach. They, they want me to teach innovative classes and to develop them. They trust me, you know, a lot more, you could say, as an instructor with 20 years plus of experience. And this year, it's going to be 10 years of experience teaching online classes. So what have I taught for them? Well, I taught Intro to Philosophy in the summer, and then I also taught Ethics for Artists and Designers. Uh, it, I got to teach a new class on Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea uh, books. Uh, I taught my philosophy, mindfulness, and life, which is basically a philosophy as a way of life kind of class, and then philosophies of human nature, another one of my staples. So, you know, all told, looking at it, I did teach, in fact, 10 classes this last year. Um, what else? A lot of stuff with modern Stoicism and Stoic philosophy. You may know that I co-edited a, a book that just recently came out, Stoicism Today, Selected Writings, Volume 3. It's me and Leah Goldrick who edited that. That was a really big project that was funded by a patron and the proceeds of which go to the Modern Stoicism organization. So that's really cool. Andy Shaka and I also did something really big this year. We organized and ran the International Stoicon Conference. That was a lot of moving parts to it. And it was, it was pretty cool. We did all these things before it. We've got videos from it. Again, you know, click the links below and you'll be taken to where you can find all that sort of stuff. I also did some presentations at Stoicon X's. Um, I was invited to give a presentation for Stoicon X military. Um, I did a presentation for Stoicon X Norway. Uh, with Andy, I did a joint presentation, Stoicon X uh, Paths to Flourishing, about uh, Stoicism and Marriage. And there was the Marcus Aurelius anniversary as well, so I did a presentation on that for the new Acropolis Chicago. Um, I also, you know, I'm the editor of the Stoicism Today blog, and I brought on a friend and colleague to be the assistant editor, and that went really well, and we are, you know, I'm getting so much more <laughs> done having somebody to help me out. Um, so that's that's been quite good. And I also developed a class on Stoic philosophy, in addition to the Epictetus and Caridian class that I've had out there for quite a while. Um, I developed one for a platform called Listenable, called Basics of Stoic Philosophy 
and practice. It's a really cool, short audio course. You can listen to it free if you want to, I think for seven days. So I'll put a link to that below as well. Um, I also did some academic conferences, all of which were online, nothing face-to-face. -face. Um, I gave a paper at the St. Anselm Conference, which was based at St. Anselm College uh, in uh, New Hampshire, but of course was, was online and we had an international crowd doing that. So that was really cool. Um, and then we, we, Harold and I, uh, the guy that I, is my, my assistant editor, he and I also did a presentation on pro-racist in the Aristotelian and Stoic traditions for the Aristotle and the Aristotelian tradition conference. And then both of us actually teamed up again and did another presentation on Proiracis and Epictetus recently at the second Brazilian Epictetus seminar. And I should say something about collaboration. I've got a few people that I do collaborative work with. You know, I mentioned my co-editor for Stoicism Today, Leah, and then Harold is, is uh, somebody who I do a lot of work with. I also have a, a friend and colleague down in South Africa, Mark Smith, and we do some collaborative stuff. And then there's other collaborative things that I do that I'll get to talking about in just a bit. Um, I think it's worth spending some time talking about the YouTube channel as well not least since I'm putting this out on YouTube, right? So something really cool. We passed the 100,000 subscribers mark earlier this year on YouTube. And, you know, I've been on YouTube producing videos now for 10 years. So that is kind of cool, you know, to have that footprint, as they call it, a digital footprint or a presence out there. I think there's a lot of people who have benefited from these uh, philosophy and other videos that I do. And it's cool to see that, you know, despite not putting a lot of work into technical production and, and more just, you know, the thought, the content, people want that and, and it's working. Um, we also did um, a number of important videos in the series. So, 46 half-hour Hegel videos over the course of the year, um, 70 Le Guin Earthsea videos in the new speculative fiction studies. Um, I also did some speculative fiction studies work on uh, Philip Jose Farmer's The Lovers. Um, I did nine Sadler's stories, the most recent of which I released just earlier this week. I remastered 10 of the Epictetus and Caridian videos, and I have some more of those to do. I did nine Sadler's Honest Book Reviews. Um, I also did eight classic metal classes with another collaborator of mine, Scott Terulli, guitar professor at Berklee School of Music and a good friend and fellow metalhead. I did nine Worlds of Speculative Fiction videos, which also then included live chat and some uh, follow-up in video conferencing, continuing that series. Um, you can also find videos for 20 Wisdom for Life radio shows that another collaborator of mine, Dan Hayes, and I did this year uh, for River West Radio, a community radio station here in town. And I also did um, about 20, about 250 Sadler's lectures and Sadler's shorts podcasts. Um, so that's, you know, some, some other presence. Um, we did a lot of cool events, AMAs every month, um, live readings from my book, Reason Fulfilled by Revelation. I shot a lot of other kind of funny videos like the Wombo art generator ones or these Twitter conversations where somebody like Richard Dawkins kind of stepped in it. Caption contests. We did quite a few of those unboxing videos and Evil Sadler even showed his head. So lots and lots of video and podcast production. Um, what else? Um, I, uh, I did the radio show, uh, Wisdom for Life, but I've also started coming on 
uh, every other week on Wednesdays onto the Drive Time from River West radio show. And that's kind of a, that's a whole different format. You know, that's more uh, short news stories and commentary and interviewing people. And that's been a lot of fun. So I'm really glad the station manager asked me to, after coming on for a few interviews myself, to become a regular co-host for that. Um, I've done a lot of podcast interviews, also some video and site interviews this year. A lot of people have been asking me to come on their shows or, you know, their podcasts. And so that's been a lot of fun as well. And then, uh, you know, a good bit of my work is, in addition to doing the public philosophy and the academic work and, you know, Stoicism today, um, I, I also have clients And I have done a lot of work this year with tutorials, philosophical counseling, consulting, academic coaching. Um, I have been very bad about doing any sort of marketing or promotion and people are seeking me out instead, which is really great. So I'm blessed in that respect. And I've just been a very, very busy guy this year. And I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to do this all, almost all from home, which is uh, quite amazing for me. And, uh, you know, we're living in a beautiful place here in the downtown of Milwaukee, great location. And so it's been a, a pretty good year, I would say, overall.